Hi everybody, we'll, uh, we'll kick off with James Green from Sky, please. Eddie, good to see you. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Good, good. Uh, now, Storm Eunice has been causing all sorts of chaos across the UK, particularly today. Has there been any disruptions for you in trading? Yeah, a little bit because it's, uh, it's pretty bad. But uh, overall, not too much. We've been, we've been okay. We've managed to probably miss the worst of it, hopefully. But uh, obviously, it's bad for everybody and we're, it's not the best situation. Well, if you just tell me exactly what you mean by misleading, then I would I would try and answer it because I think we've been incredibly clear and concise in everything we've said. But if you could back up what you said, then misleading, and tell me what that means. Yeah, misleading reports in the press, not by West Ham themselves, not by you guys and what you've been saying. But there's been lots like, of reports this week, for example, where the RSPCA have come out and said that they haven't received any donations, so they haven't had any contact about any courses. I just wanted you to just clear that situation. Well, I couldn't clear all that up because I don't know exactly about the, where the money goes and when it goes, but what I do know is that there's an investigation going on at the moment. It takes time. Normally, that will be the time when I'm guessing the monies would be passed over. But uh, again, I'm not an expert in that, so I don't think there's anything that this football club or from me has been misleading at all. Well, the atmosphere has always been good here. I think one of the biggest things we have is uh, a really good team spirit, a group of lads who are resilient. And they showed it again last week in their performance against Leicester to come from behind. You know, we, we showed it even in a game against Kiddyminster. Still needed resilience and a good team spirit to make sure it happened. So we keep bobbing along. Uh, we want to improve our performances, but uh, we have a, a really good spirit in amongst the club. Well, he's better, but it's taken him a couple of days to go over it. He had uh, quite bad sickness and illness, but uh, he's trained the last couple of days, so I'm hoping that he'll be available. How's he doing at the moment with everything going on mentally? Is he in a good place? Uh, I think he's he's probably really disappointed about what he's done, and he's, he's thinking about it a lot, no doubt. But uh, overall, we're trying to get him to move on. You know, we want him to concentrate on his training. He played very, very well for us uh, against Watford the other week there. So we're hoping that if we can keep him at those levels of performances, we'll be really pleased with that. Uh, he's really well liked here amongst the supporters and these performances which he's put in throughout the season already. So hopefully he can focus on his football and uh, we'll give him as much support as we can until we get him right back to his best. Yeah, we've got one or two, two, one or two doubts and one or two question marks over some players who've picked up some injuries. But uh, obviously, I wouldn't give you give you that away. But we have just uh, like every other club, we've got one or two injuries at the moment. Well, I think first and foremost, it's it's been a really difficult job to probably stabilise a club the size of Newcastle with all the changes going on, with maybe all the expectations which are going on at the club. But I think Eddie's a, a really good steady hand. I think he's someone who you know, showed that he can build a football club. He's got an idea about how he, he wants to play. He's got a really good reputation in, in the, the manager circle because of uh, the, the good work he done at Bournemouth. So he's got a really big club now in Newcastle, you know, and a club now which, uh, as I said before, has got big expectations. I think the results recently have been good. I think they've uh, they brought in some new signings, which have, have helped them as well. So they're a, they're a much tougher task maybe than they were at the start of the season. But I have to say, even Newcastle at any time is a tough task, and uh, we'll need to be at our best to get a result. Now you mentioned about the 
Well, I think Kieran Trippier is a really good player uh, in the first place. Whether he was playing for Newcastle or, or playing for NDL, I think he's a he's a good player, good fullback, and you know as we've seen before, he's he's set pieces and his deliveries are also very good. So yeah, it'll be a miss that they've signed him and they've not got him. But I think what he's done is he's probably given them a bit help, give them a bit of momentum, give Newcastle a bit of momentum, and uh, you know they'll be hoping that they can keep that going. Our jobs to get our form going again and keep our, our decent run going. Well, I want Mick to get back on the goal scoring sheet and I want him to get on it regular. But if you look at us as a club, it's not a problem because we are still probably, I don't know, fourth in the Premier League as, as goal scorers go. So we're really fortunate we've got other people who've stepped up, got goals through different areas in the team. And I think generally any football manager would probably want the goals to be shared around because it shows that you can score from different areas. But for me personally, I'd, I want to get Mick back because he's really important for the team. I want him to get him back to the, to the levels. And actually, you knowing what I've seen, even last week at Leicester, he didn't get a goal. But I'm just beginning to see little bits which are giving me uh, sort of encouragement that he's, he's on his way back. And I don't think it'll be too long till Mickey's getting back on the score sheet. Thank you. James, move on to Anita from PLP. Yeah. Hi, Anita. Hi, good, thanks, Anita. Well, I would, just like I said before, Anita, uh, I wouldn't give anything away, but as I said, we've got a couple of knocks, but I think all clubs will have knocks now and we're not, I don't want to focus on it, but we've just got one or two people who are, who are got a little bit of a doubt and we just need to make sure we, we, we see if we can, they can be ready for tomorrow. I think we're a little bit, uh, a bit more attacking was paid off. I think everything, the things we've done at the time, we're, we're working a lot easier at the moment. We've, we've not found that quite as easy, but also I have to say our goals haven't really changed. We still score goals. It just hasn't felt that way to me. I think two or three individual players have probably just not quite played at their levels. But as always defensively, you know, I was disappointed that we conceded two goals. Uh, we have to, we have to, eradicate that quickly because conceding no goals will give us a great chance of uh, winning so we have to try and get stronger defensively but I'm really pleased with the goals we are scoring and how they're coming around whether they come in the first minute or the last minute uh, I'm pleased and I think I think we if we can find some form we're top form in the run in now you know it'll put us in real good stead for where we want to finish this season Oh, well, it's shown you exactly what we have. We've got a, a, a group who have driven, determined to try and keep improving. You know, I, I remember a couple of years ago of just saying, look, we have to look to improve every game, every season. You know, and we, when you mentioned your question about Leicester City, we took four points off Leicester City this year, which I would say generally would be seen as a pretty good return when you're playing a side such as Leicester City. So I think really, me personal, my expectations have grown on what I want from the players. I think... Uh, publicly, supporter-wise, and I think it's good because it's a good sign. I think a manager's job is to try and grow expectations, and I think we're doing that here. I think we're, we're giving ourselves bigger challenges, and we've got a lot of big games to come in the, in the coming weeks and months. Yeah. 
I think I think they've become a much more balanced team. I think they've got a formation at the moment uh, which is helping them. I think they've got players probably playing in roughly the you know, positions which suit them. And I think that's given them a, a, a good chance. Uh, as well as that, confidence in momentum is a big thing in football as well. And I think they've gained a bit of confidence in the results. They're probably you know, looking and saying now, you know, we're out of trouble now. We're in, we've got a chance of getting away from it, which will be giving them that momentum to, to try and continue. Thank you. Thank you, Anita. So just finally, Emma from the BBC. Hi, Emma. Hi. On, on that point, how much sympathy can you feel for Eddie Howe? Because he started to get really good results, but you imagine the injury to Kieran Trippier is going to affect you know, their, their performances. Well, I hope you're right. I hope it does affect the performances, Emma, I've got to be honest. But look, we've had, we've had injuries to, like, Angela Bonner, for example, who's been out with the which has made a big difference to what, what we've had this season. So I think part of being in football as a manager is that you're going to get injuries at different time and you have to try and find ways of getting through it. Uh, obviously, when you bring in a new player, you want them to be fit and play, but it's part and parcel of it. So uh, I hope tomorrow it does, it does have some effect, Emma. <laughs> um, I'm sure you're aware of this, but you have scored in every home game in the Premier League so far this season. Like it's interesting what you're saying about needing to improve defensively because if you're going into games at London Stadium mm -hmm. almost guaranteed of a goal then if you you know th yeah. th that could be where you pick up some incredibly vital points yeah it's a really simple equation Emma you're right you know we, we I think we, we look as if we can score we've had some games where we've maybe not been quite as sharp or quite as ruthless as what we've been but I do think that us tightening up defensively uh, doing better than we've done defensively would be important so but in the same breath, I still feel that the, the fluidity we had probably in the early part of the season was still to get back uh, uh, through a midfield and front line. But defensively, you know, when you're always not quite at your best, you need your defenders to get you through the game and, and make sure you, they keep you in a, a position where you can win. One player who continues to impress is Jared Bowen. He's been involved in, in eight of the last ten goals scored by West Ham in all competitions. Mm -hmm. Well, he's certainly stepped up at different times when we've needed him. His goals, his assists have been great in the in the period you've talked about. So now what we want from Jared is that consistency. But he's become a little bit more, I think, in control of himself, a little bit understanding of the, of the all-round situation. His finishing's become very good recently. He's you know, he's in good form. And we talk about confidence. Jared's in a really good, good vein of confidence at the moment in form, which is really important for the forward players. Thank you, David. Thank you. Thanks, Emma. Thank you, Ron. Camera's off, please.